Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and online violin tutor. So I want to talk to you about the steps that you need to take when you are choosing a new violin. Now this might be that you're physically in a shop and you've gone to one of their little back rooms and you're choosing violins or you have managed to get a bunch of violins sent to your house and you're just try, trying them out to see which one you like the best. I know some companies do that because a lot of people can't get to these places but they still want the violins available and there's whatever the arrangement the shop has with shipping them out to you and you sending them back and things. So whichever way you are doing it, I wanna go through the steps to help you choose your violin. If you've got a bunch that you wanna choose from because you wanna upgrade your common violin, I'm gonna tell you exactly the steps that you need to take or steps that will help you in choosing your violin. Before I do go any further though, I just want to tell you all about my 1 to 30 violin course. I know a lot of you know I have a 1 to 30 violin course and are happily enjoying that course so far, but a lot of you don't know I've got a violin course. Maybe you've stumbled on my channel, you stumbled across this video and you have no idea and you want to learn to play the violin. This is a 1 to 30 violin course which is completely online. The course will guarantee to take you from a complete beginner so you know nothing about nothing to a very decent accomplished intermediate player assuming that you're obviously following the lessons it is 100 percent downloadable so there is nothing physical to ship out i have the books here but i've just printed them out on my my printer upstairs and then just bound them together so once you've purchased you can download them and you can get going on the books straight away or get going on the course straight away the first 10 lessons are absolutely free. So you can go and watch them. You can see if you like my teaching style, you can see the way I teach. So it'll give you a little bit of an, an idea. So it gives you an introduction to the course so you can see how you get on with that. And the resources for the lessons where appropriate are linked underneath those videos. So the first 10 lessons and any resources, sheet music, that kind of thing are completely free. Once you've done the first 10 lessons, you'll then move on to songbook one, where there is 10 pieces that have been arranged at the exact level that you will be at after those 10 lessons. There's nothing more, nothing less in those books. So you don't have to go hunting around the internet to find, try and find music that you can actually play after just getting through those first 10 lessons. After the songbook one, you'll then move on to lessons 11 to 20. There'll be quite a lot of technical stuff in that book that you need to learn to move on to the next stage, as well as some theory that goes hand in hand with it. Once you finish that book, you'll then move on to songbook two, which contains another 10 pieces written at the exact level that you will be by the time you get to lesson 20. Then you'll move on to the next 10 lessons. So it starts to get a little bit harder at that point, more advanced techniques and that kind of thing. And then you'll finish off with songbook three, which is a culmination of everything that you, you've you learned in the first or in those those 30 lessons. So it, it it's a really, really good course. It's I've had this course now for, for several years. You can go and check out the reviews on my channel and and see what some of my customers think of it. But it's it's a really, really good course. And it's based on my 20 odd years of teaching students privately, as well as being um, well as being a student myself and also being an examiner for the London College of Music for about four years. So all of that knowledge has come together and I've I've condensed and put them all into this one to 30 violin course. I will leave some more information in and some links on where you can purchase it directly underneath this video. Whether you are in a shop and you're choosing your violin or you've got a bunch of violins at home, the first step that you need to take or the first step you need to do is take your current violin with you and use your current bow. Don't even think about buying a new bow, just forget about for the moment, just use your current bow in this whole situation. But take your violin with you. Obviously, if you're at home, get your violin out and, and you know have it in front of you. So you need your current violin as a basis to work everything from. Okay, number two, take some familiar music with you that you can actually play well. Do not 
play stuff that you're learning or stuff that you've only just picked up you want some music you, you've been playing for quite a while it really doesn't matter what level it is nobody's here to judge you it's not a competition or anything like that you want music that you can play well the reason why you want that is because you want to be able to play music that you don't have to think about playing so you want music that you can play blindfolded so, so to speak you want music that you can play with your hands tied behind your back um, figuratively speaking, if you know what I mean. So you want to be focusing entirely on the sound that's coming out of the violin and not really focusing on what your bow arm's doing. You know, you're not focusing on what your left hand's doing. It is not a practice session. That's so important. I think, you know, I've seen people kind of try different violins and it sort of turns into a bit of a competition, you know, a bit of a practice session. Look how good. It's got nothing to do with that. Nobody cares about that. It's just you choosing a violin. So it's completely up to you what you do. But my advice would be to play music that that, that you can just play uh, blindfolded you know music that you don't have to think about so that you can focus on exactly the sound that is projecting and coming out of the violin okay number three take three pieces if possible or or have three pieces in your mind that you know you can play if possible you want something that's going to be low so something that you can play on on the g string or something that focuses down there then you want something that's kind of focusing on the middle region or just something that's an all rounder. Then you want a piece that you know goes quite high up on the E string, just so that you can get a general feel of the, 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 the three kind of tones of the violin. So the low tone, the middle tone and the high tone. You might have a violin that plays really nicely on the E string, like mine does, for example. Um, mine also plays really nicely on the G. The middle region, is, is okay, but it fares better on the higher and on the lower um, scope. So it sort of depends on your personal preference. But if you have three pieces that cover those three areas, then you know you're gonna be getting out or getting the most sound out of the violin as possible. So it's gonna give you the best idea of what the violin is gonna be sounding like. You don't wanna be playing a piece of music that's all top end, it's all on the E string. Then you decide to get the violin home, you know, and then two, three weeks down the line, it sounds horrendous on the G string. You know, you should have been figuring that out when you had the chance when you were playing it. So you'll notice that when I do my um, when I do my violin reviews, when I've done all the recent uh, Fiddler Man violin reviews, for example, I always try and choose three pieces. I'll try and choose something low, something middle, and something higher because a lot of you will always say, "Shame you didn't play something on the G string," or "Shame you didn't you know play something on the the E." So I like to just give as much variety as I can, and you want something similar as well. Number four, choose a small number of violins at a time. So say four to five violins. You don't wanna be getting bogged down with about eight, nine, 10 violins because it's gonna to be too much. It's gonna to be too time consuming. It's gonna to be too fatiguing. So depending on what kind of scenario you're in, whether you're at home and you've been sent them, you're not gonna be sent uh, a huge number anyway because a company's not gonna do that. And if you're in a shop, they can just keep you know, giving you the, the, the violins that are within the budget that you've specified to them. So I would just recommend that you stick to about four or five new violins that you can choose from and your violin will make up six. Number five, and this is probably personal preference here, but I like to make sure that I know nothing about each violin that I'm playing on. So I don't want to know anything about them at all. All I know is that they're all within the price range that I have specified to them to, to trial on. Obviously, I'm not gonna have anything that's, that I can't afford and that's well out of my price range. So I know all the violins that I'm playing are within my price range or if I've got any, uh, if I have any special, specifications that I've stated, then I know that, you know, that they'll all be within within that. But I don't want to know anything about the violin. I don't want to know the price of the violin. I don't want to know who made it. I don't want to know where it's come from. I don't really want to know what the wood is. I don't really look at them. I don't pick up the violin and have a good inspection. I just pick the violin up and I just want to play it. And I just, you know, I don't really sort of, I want to play it blind, so to speak. I don't want to know anything about it because I don't want to be influenced by something. If I've got in my head that I want um, an Italian violin and I definitely don't want a German violin for some bizarre reason, that's not, that's not actually true. That's just something I've just made up. But 
if I've decided I want an Italian violin and then, you know, the guy comes in and says, oh, we've got a German violin here, I'm instantly going to be kind of turned off by it. So I also purposefully don't look at too much about the wood as well because I don't want to be influenced or put off by what it looks like because it could actually be the violin for me and just because of the pure simple fact that I can't get over the fact that I don't like the colour of it really kind of spoils it. Maybe when you know if I've chosen that violin and I really can't get over the colour of the wood and something else maybe just pips it to the post then maybe then but I personally don't like to be influenced some of you may want to know a bit about it but I generally don't feel that's a good idea because I feel like you can just be influenced into kind of making decisions that aren't necessarily the best decisions and you could be missing out on you know, you could be missing out on the violin of a lifetime, but you've subconsciously not chosen it because the colour or it's German or it's this or it's a modern violin or, you know, it's not 250 years old. You know, something something kind of very menial and something silly like that. So once you've kind of got through those five points, number six, and this is what I personally like to do. So this is based on my experience and what I personally think is, is, is a good way to choose violins. You want to start by playing the three pieces on your violin. And the reason why I think you want to do that is just because you want to give yourself a, a, a base. I know you've played your violin many, many times before, but you're in a new environment um, and I think you should just familiarize yourself by just playing the three pieces on your violin just so you can kind of reset things and get adjusted. The next thing you need to do is choose one of the four or five violins at random and start playing the three pieces on that. That way you can compare it to your violin and the new violin. So you may like your current violin more than you like the new violin. You shouldn't do, but it kind of just gives you somewhere to kind of just you know, springboard off from. Number seven, choose the second new violin. So I'm not talking about your violin here. You've already just played the first of the new violins. Now get the second of the new violins and play the three pieces and you can then compare it to the first one that you've just played. Once you have done that, number eight, once you've done that, you can then put the one that you don't like out of those two violins into the sort of garbage pile for now. You might come back to that a little bit later, but for now, you're comparing it with the first one. You're comparing the second one to the first one. Forget yours for the moment. That was just to get us kind of off and going. So out of those two, you can kind of put one in the garbage pile and keep one or put one in the kind of keep pile. Number nine, then you want to continue that process. So get your third violin and play that and compare it to the one that you kept, whichever out of the, the first two that was gonna be. So then once you've played those two together, you can put one of those in the garbage pile. And then do you see kind of what's happening? So you're kind of eliminating one each time. So then what you can go back and do then as your final step would be to maybe do the process again, um, you know, or continue on if you're happy, you know, either or, it doesn't really matter, but start by playing your violin, then pick violin number one, then play violin number two, see which one you like out of violin number one or violin number two. Let's say you thought violin number two wasn't, wasn't you didn't really like it, you preferred violin number one, put violin two in the garbage, pick violin number three, then you're comparing violin number three to violin number one. Then maybe you've decided violin number one is no good, you prefer three, so you can put number one in the garbage pile. Then you're picking violin number four, and you're playing it against violin number three. Do you, do you sort of see, it's, it's much easier to kind of um, work this out when you're actually in, in the room with them because you can put them into separate piles. But that's how I like to do it. It's a very methodical way of doing it. And you're playing the same three consistent pieces over and over. That's not to say that you can't play any other pieces at all. Of course, you know, it's, it's, it's your kind of session if you like, but I generally think those are good guidelines to stick to. And then eventually you will have the one that you like 
Um, maybe you could go back to any of the others just to be sure. But I feel like it's a good process to kind of kick things off and to kind of get you started rather than, you know, ah, getting completely bogged down and, and all muddled up because you don't really know where to start. You don't know what to do. So it's a good methodical way of, of getting it started, working out the process and figuring out how you're going to choose which violin because you're always comparing them. You know, there's no other way of doing it really because you've got no other frame of reference. So... Thank you very much for watching. I hope that has helped you in how to choose a violin and physically go and choose a violin, whether you're in a shop or you've got them sent to you at home or whatever. I will put links to my, my one to 30 violin course in the description underneath this video so you can go and check that out too but it really is a fantastic course so if you are looking to invest in a course or move on to online lessons then you know do check that out and check the reviews out on my website as well so thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye